<laughs> chiming in with her own energy plan in a mock political oh, ad. All this is fun, but will it lead to any real solutions? Let's ask our Bulls and Bears panel. Bob, first to you. First of all, I don't know if you saw that. Yeah. It's very good. Yeah, it's actually, she's kind of more clever than I uh, than I ever would have given, her, given her credit for. And Liz, by the way, you don't have to be from Jersey to insult the state. So we, <laughs> is that a rule? That that's right. official? Yeah, that's, okay. that's pretty much fine. You know, I, actually, I don't think the, uh, the, you know, the tire gauge and the, and the uh, tune-up idea is any worse than some of the, the, the really knuckle-headed ideas that were tossed around back in the spring. Things like the, um, the suspension of the gas tax for the, uh, for the duration of the summer. Uh, it really isn't. The thing I'm finding fascinating about energy right now is that prices came down over a three-week period for gasoline, but they came down by mere pennies. And yet last week, the highest consumption that we saw in 2008. So it doesn't take much to get people to change their behavior right back. Peter? Well, we don't even need an energy policy. You know, the, the problem isn't that oil is going up in price. It's the value of our money that's going down. And if Congress wants to do something about that, they can start cutting government programs. They can start with abolishing the Department of Energy. We don't need it at all. You know, we need the free market to set energy prices. You know, one of the reasons that so many people are driving SUVs is because Congress is still doling out huge tax subsidies for people who buy them. I know I bought an SUV specifically to get the tax Gary, break. I know you've had a lot of problems with Peter in the past, but he makes some sense there, doesn't he? Uh, look, he's right. And there's been it's such a mess by our government at this point in time with it, with their policy. I do disagree on one end. We do need an energy policy. And I got to tell you, if I'm John McCain, I take that little uh, Obama talk about inflating tires and put it on a spool and just play it 3,000 times a day and send it out to the U.S. because it is about as economically illiterate as I have ever seen. It does not help. And the fact that people keep saying, oh, if you drill, that's not going to help. When you always add supply, it always brings price down we that is economics 101 drop, gary and the price has come down so pat dorsey is the free market simply working without making major changes uh, I think it's pretty tough to make a correlation, as uh, David implied, between uh, the president's announced lifting of the cap on drilling and the downturn we've seen in energy prices. The downturn well, in crude in the past few weeks you're just wrong, is simply. <laughs> Thanks, David. I think you are, actually. But, you know, we no, can no, you that. are. Um, no, I mean, I think what it goes back to is something Peter mentioned earlier in the program, which is this unwinding of the giant short financials long energy trade. I mean, supply-demand relationships simply haven't changed that much over the past few weeks. And the additional supply a few years out of continental drill oil is not great enough to account for the change we've seen. It's all financial unwinding of one big trade. No more and no less. Yes, yes. And, and just remember, the government pounded away at the speculators who are buying oil and pounded away at the speculators who were selling financials so there was an absolute agenda so you're there and that helped it. politicians were pounding on speculators no i'm saying they're helping manipulate the markets by going after people right. that are buying the wrong thing and and, and selling the wrong thing okay. they, they want things changing guess what it's time to take a look at who made